Hey guys, thank you for watching and welcome to the video. Today we are going to be talking about the Tang Zhu C Audio Shimin Lee Encounter Edition IEM. We are going to be reviewing it and I'm going to tell you why it's awesome, but it's also a really frustrating set because it's so close to being just about perfect, if that makes sense, but it's not quite perfect in some ways that make it hard to listen to, but it's still awesome in its own way. So I don't know if that makes sense, but I will clarify that in this video. I spend hours listening to this thing. I listened to it. I listened to the HBB Con. I listened to some other ones, just to put it against it. Even the new, I forget what it's called. But anyway, I listened to a bunch of IEMs and I've listened to this a lot because I was really trying to get my head around what is going on uh, with this unit. I will be going over the build quality of the unit uh, pretty quickly. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, it, it. It's built well, if that's all that you're wondering. I don't know why you'd be watching this. Just wondering that, but if you are, then there you go, it's built pretty well. So we'll go over that quickly, and then I'll spend most of the time in this video talking about how it sounds, including gaming performance. If you just want to listen to me talk about the gaming performance and see some clips of me showing off in Elden Ring, feel free to go down in the description and you can see that. I'll be comparing this to the HBB Con, because that's pretty much my favorite 50-ish dollar IEM right now, and I don't really compare it to anything else because there's not really a lot in that range. I honestly think the $20 sets, uh, when you look at the, the HBB or you look at the uh, 7 Hertz Zero or, you know, a bunch of the other $20, I mean, they're really good for their price, but they really don't compete uh, with these two. And I, I think it's because you just get a lot better driver performance on these. So they can tune those pretty well. But even though that they're tuned well, they can't keep up technically with some of the faster tracks and detail and instrument separations and that kind of thing. So I think it does make sense to just talk about this in conjunction with the Con, which is definitely worth 50 bucks and it's probably my favorite at that dollar amount. In this video, I'll be discussing the soundstage, imaging, amplification options, and the bass performance. And then, like I said, I will be going into the gaming performance as well. I'll try to keep it moving and we can get through this pretty quickly. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jeremy. Welcome to the channel. Love to hear from you. Please drop a like. That really helps me out a lot. Please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, if you want to talk about anything, leave a comment below. I'd love to just talk about IEMs or your view on things or something you want me to review or whatever. Just feel free to write something below and we can chat. I do appreciate everybody watching the videos and thank you so much uh, for being here. So, all right, that's enough of that and let's get started. Starting with build quality, the casing does feel really high quality and I enjoy the feeling of heft they have in the hand. It doesn't feel like those $20 sets, which apart from the Olaf feel very plasticky and cheap. This definitely has a better quality feel for it in the hand. They do feel appropriately made for 50 bucks. I really like the kind of fire engine red. I think it's fire. I'm colorblind, so it's red. It, it looks cool. Maybe it's fire engine red. Maybe it's not. Don't be mad if it is not. I just know I like the, the color. It's got a bright kind of sports car-y kind of feel to it. They fit in my ears really well. Uh, a lot of IEMs, when you put them in your ears, they have trouble. They don't feel like they want to stay, especially using the stock tips. A lot of times I will use third-party tips, and I did on these two. I used a bunch of different tips. I use X Elastics and the CP100 Pluses, and I even used some uh, foam tips, it, partly because of stuff we'll get into later with the response. I was trying to tame down the upper mid-range on these, but I ended up just going back to the stock tips, and the point is that they fit really well. The stock tips, the, the base ones is what I ended up using because they have a better performance uh, in terms of taming down that kind of spicy upper mid-range trebly area but all of they give you two options they give you the balanced ones which i thought sounded great but there was just a peak around that 2000 mark that would just bust my eardrums open basically at certain points so i had to back off of that and the bass steps tend to they kind of make the it feel less open, but they do take care of that, which unfortunately with these I thought was a worthwhile uh, change. Now, if you have 
EQ capabilities, like I have a hardware EQ here, as well as uh, software EQs that I can use. It's really easy to kind of tame that a little bit and get the best of both worlds with it. But if you don't, you may want to stick to just using the bass tips to bring in that upper mid range as much as you possibly can, because it can be a little stabby uh, when you're listening to music that gets shouty. I mean, you start listening to something like Breed from Nirvana and, and you know, whatever. You listen to some Metallica and it gets a little crazy. It's going to hurt your ears and you're going to want more bass, or at least I did. So you turn up the volume, but then as you're listening to it, you realize that it's, you know, there's certain points where the upper mid range is too much and then you back off of it. So it can be a little bit frustrating that way. So anyway, back to the build quality. The cable is really similar to what you get with the HBB Con, which is better than a lot of the cables that we've used in $50 sets. It's a lot better than what you got with the Truthier's Zero, and just in general, or you know, you go further back and you look at stuff like the Tin T2. This is just a much better quality cable than you got back then. As I said, I got a good seal of the tips, so you don't have to spend more money on additional tips. And I did not find that replacing the tips necessarily really improved sound quality, so that's something you can save your money for. You don't have to spend the extra 10 or $20 or whatever it usually costs to replace those. Okay, we need to talk about amplification of these. Uh, most things, as you guys know, I will just use the Apple dongle to review. And I did that with these as well. The issue with the Apple dongle is that it gives, it does give you very good quality clarity in, in detail. And it, it's a crisp, clean sound, but it is a little bit cold. And the issue with these IEMs is that when you combine those two, these are already a little bit harsh in the upper mid range. And the, the, the super clean, sterile kind of sound that you get with the Apple dongle, it combines to make it more harsh in the upper mid-range, which can lead to that kind of fatigue. Like I have a Modi Magni stack with a Loki EQ in it, and it's awesome, and it's really easy with that to get great, uh, it feels much more hard-hitting bass, it kind of opens it up a little bit more. It's more dynamic um, in the sense that you just feel like it It just gives everything the ability to breathe. And it's really easy with that setup to just EQ out the, the peaky kind of feeling that you get around 2K. And it sounds amazing. But the issue with that is that's one, two, you know, three, four hundred dollars worth of equipment. Maybe you just want to use it with your phone or your built in whatever you've got on a computer, that kind of thing. So if you're using an Apple dongle with these you are going to get some harshness in the upper mid range. The bass isn't going to be quite as punchy as you might like. But that being said, it's still a really good experience. Like if you look at these compared to what the con gives you, the con gives you a more toned down and laid back and it doesn't have as much instrument separation and it doesn't have as much uh, detailed in, in sound stage, but it gives you a really nice, good technical performance with good bass kind of setup and it's a really nice set but would i use it for gaming no it doesn't give you much sense of soundstage directionality any of those kind of things and the cool thing about this guy is that you could use it along with that so if you want more laid back listening you get the hbb con if you want um, a little bit better technical performance you want to use it for gaming you could get that so you've got two devices 50 bucks a piece so you know you're in the hundred dollar range to have a really good musical experience and the ability to switch it up which i honestly think is a big deal like sometimes your ears just get used to things and if you can go back and forth between the two of these things i think that it would keep things fresh and they have very good distinct uh, qualities about them So let's talk specifically about the, the soundstage. These have a unique and fun sense of soundstage. I think the best way to describe it is like it starts in the middle of your head and it kind of works its way out. You feel like you're in the middle of the music and it's kind of like going away from you. On some tracks, the sound of a guitar string uh, would actually sound like you were going up and down on the guitar which was a different experience for me. I can't remember ever hearing that on another IEM where you truly got this sense of uh, moving uh, up and down. Like it was just, sl it wasn't like a huge difference. It wasn't like the crowd way out there. It was just, it was the sense of being able to, to just tell that somebody was slightly moving uh, 
around on on an instrument and I thought that, that was something really fresh I noticed details on tracks that I hadn't noticed before I can't tell you that this has better detail I mean I didn't like literally sit next to you know different ones and go and try to you know pick out every little detail about what I liked on one versus what I liked on on the other or or every footstep that I could hear or whatever but I can tell you as I was listening to this I heard details on some songs that I'd never noticed. On my reference track for Soundstage, the Eagles 1994 Hotel California Live from the Hell Freezes Over Tour, it's just a really good song for getting a, a feeling for Soundstage. It did a really good job of layering the music and the sounds of the crowd versus the sounds of the instruments being played. I was very impressed by that, and as we'll get to in gaming later, it, it's really good for gaming, and not only can you give a sense of direction and stage and location but it also it's very precise like you can actually hear up and down where everything is so in terms of the technicalities i think that this iem does an amazing job it's really good it's probably the best that i've heard in that 50 dollar range if you listen to something challenging like Deliverance by, I think his name is Thomas Bergerson, it just, it's got a ton of stuff going on. It's got bass and mids and treble. And so it's got tinkly stuff and it's got, you know, big boomy bass and all kinds of things that are going on at the same time. And this does an amazing job of just giving you all of that. It never feels like it's overwhelmed. It feels like it can keep up with that. It just does a great job of giving you all the details of everything. Now, the bass of these, it's very punchy and it's fun and it gives a good heft when needed on bass heavy tracks, but if you're listening to tracks that don't have a ton of bass built into them, this may not necessarily give you any additional bass. Like it's not going to give uh, an increase in the amount that you get. So if you're a bass head and you just want everything to sound super bassy, this is not going to give you that. If you just want to be able to hear bass truly on the tracks that it has it, and say if you listen to something that has just like a ton of bass on it, like uh, Angel by Mass Attack, it'll give you that deep, thick bass that you might want, but it's just not going to add it to everything. So they're not necessarily bass heavy IEMs, but they do have plenty of it when you need it. Also in terms of bass response, if you do add a dedicated amp, you get a more growly, more powerful, more punchy bass to it than you will with just the uh, an Apple adapter. Okay, for the upper mid-range vocal kind of area, that's what we really need to talk about and something that did bother me a little bit with these, or it, it is the big bother because I love everything else about these, is that you do get, as I referenced earlier, a little bit of, it's just, it can be painful, honestly, with like an, an Apple dongle. It gives you, it can get kind of sharp. Now, it is very clear, distinct. You'll love how vocal sound and especially on a track like if you get a gentle songwriter kind of artist you won't notice it but if you get on much busier tracks where there's a, a lot of power to the vocals and they're you know shouting you know stuff like rock things like that i found i i had to turn the volume down a lot on it which was uh frustrating now using the loki as i mentioned earlier if i just turned it down a little bit in the 2k range that issue went away but just know you're in for a pretty intense experience with these if you get them. And for me, unfortunately, it wasn't just intense and sparkly. It was also a little bit painful in the vocal ranges. And that would be the only thing that would hold me back from using these a ton is that these aren't like six hours and just kick back and listen to whatever on them. Uh, I get a headache out of it. Now, that being said, if I went back to something like the cons, then I would be thinking about these and be like, man, I want that. I'm missing that energy. So that being said, at lower volumes, this is a really good. So if you're like a low volume, Volume listener, this gives you a lot of spice even at lower volumes. But if you have that feeling of like, oh, I want, I, you know, I want a little bit more. I want to hear more bass. You know, you go to click that volume up. Pretty soon, it'll get stabby, and then you have to turn it back down again. Or at least I did. So just be warned, they're they're awesome, but they can be fatiguing. If I had to nitpick anything in the vocal range, I would say that maybe you're missing just a touch of note weight. But like if you're just listening to something that's just a vocalist track, these come through as clear, clean, vibrant. I mean, it's a very good sound, but it's just if you want to say one downside, you don't get a whole lot of richness and warmth in the voice. So it is missing a little bit of note weight and a little bit of a warmth to the vocalist. But I mean, you really can't. I'm really nitpicking. It's actually really good. 
these are amazing gaming IEMs like at any price. I was really happy with these. I played Halo Reach. I was able to hear enemies and judge by the distance and direction of where they were. I was also able to hear like echo textures within buildings, so which I'd never noticed in that game before. So if you're inside, you actually get a slightly echoey sound from enemies and stuff when they're talking, which I'd never noticed before. And I think it just goes to show like how good the details are on this unit. I was also able to tell whether an enemy was below or above me, which is something that a lot of IEMs can't do either. I mean, you can kind of tell general direction. Are they left? Are they right? Are they further away or not? Maybe a little bit of idea, but like I could literally tell that something was like right on top of me or, or below me or whatever. So if you need something for, for gaming as well as your general listening, I think this is an excellent option. And as I said earlier, it would really complement the con well, too. The con is a little bit laid back. It's a little bit um, easy going. I mean, you still get more technical performance, I feel like, than you do on something like the HBB, the original HBB QKZ. But it, it is a little bit more laid back, where this is a little bit more in-your-face, detailed, all that kind of stuff. So these would be great to look at getting together. So if you don't care about the crispiness of the vocals and things like that and you just want a little bit more bass maybe buy the the con but if you don't you know if you want a more intense experience you want to get more clarity more detail this is an excellent set for me i would say buy both and you'll probably be pretty happy the lee has much better soundstage imaging um, it's got the ability to do gaming. So, I mean, you can do a lot more with it, but it's really just going to come down to what your preferences are. Can you deal with a little bit of excess energy in that vocal range to get everything else and possibly tune it a little bit with EQ? Or do you just want something laid back that you could listen to whenever you want to and you're not really worried about gaming performance? If that is the case, then feel free to just go with the con. It's still an excellent set too. It's just this is one that I was very impressed with for certain things, but it also has some things that might be a deal breaker to certain people. With low powered, colder leaning amplification like the Apple dongle, the vocals come across as a little bit harsh and they are hard to listen to at higher volume. So just keep that in mind. If you have a dedicated amp, you'll probably have a better experience with these, but I'm guessing a lot of you guys aren't gonna have those, so it's just something to keep in mind. I had to use the bass tips to help with the harshness of the sounds in the 2K range, which I wish I hadn't had to do, but it is what it is. At least you're not having to buy additional tips for these. This set is even more open and airy sounding with the balance tips, but the vocals were a little bit too hot for me to listen to that way for long. So, I mean, feel free to try them, but just if it really bothers you, just keep in mind, you can always move to the, the bass tips and it'll help a little bit with that. So if you can get past those shortcomings or you can EQ them, this is a great set. It's excellent for gaming. It has great detail and imaging and works for just about any type of music. It's fast enough to keep up with complicated tracks and has enough bass not to feel underwhelming in bass heavy tracks. I think it's a great companion set to a more laid back and warm option like the Ola or the HBB. So that's what I got. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope that this helped somewhat. If you could, please leave me a like. It would help a ton. If you would subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and God bless.